Hi guys and welcome my name is James and today I'm going to show you how to dye vegetable tanned leather. Now please note this is only going to work with vegetable tanned leather. If you have any other types of leather this may not work for you and there are other methods of doing that. A quick note before we start off about Fibing's leather dye which is probably the one that you'll find most. There are two different ones you want to look out for. You have the usual leather dye and you have the oil dye also known as pro dye which oh, have some here. Uh, the oil and pro dye are basically the same thing. They're just packaged differently. And I believe they're switching names uh, or have been over the last few years, um, but it's exactly the same product. Now, this dye is very aggressive and works well for chrome tanned leathers, but it will dry out your vegetable tanned leathers really fast. For vegetable tanned leathers, go for the oil dye or pro dye. Yeah, it just works better for veg tanned leather. I'm also going to be using 100% pure Neatsford oil from Feebings, but you can use any Neatsford oil, of course, uh, not necessarily just this one. The first thing you'll want to do is give your leather a nice quick coat of Neatsford oil. You don't know how long your leather has been in storage, you don't know how dry it is, you really don't know in what condition it is, uh, and just to make sure that your leather is as supple and malleable and has all the oils it needs, go ahead and apply this before you start. You don't want to do too much, just a quick coat, just to get some of those oils back into the leather. The main thing this is going to do is avoid your leather drying out during the dyeing process as dyeing leather uses, basically leather dyes use alcohol to draw in the pigments and the alcohol in the leather dye is going to dry out your leather which is why you should avoid the Feebing's leather dye for vegetable tanned leather and go for the pro dye or the oil dye which is again using alcohol but uh, it's not the same. At this point you really don't need to worry about getting an even coat here. This is just a question of getting some of those oils back into the leather to avoid it getting dry and just to keep it nice and supple. Now this is going to seem dreadfully obvious but always work on a surface which you're not worried about getting spills on and have some kind of cleaning uh, paper at your disposal in case you do have any major spills. It happens, it happens. I mean however careful you are uh, a spill is very very easy and uh, at least be prepared for it. Today I am going to be using mainly walnut, but I am going to drop in a bit of red just to give it some kind of nice red luster to it, or at least that's the goal I'm hoping to achieve today. Um, but obviously you could just go with one instead of two. Now the only thing you need to really note about this is that I like to dilute my dye roughly 50-50 with alcohol. Um, again, this is going to dry out the leather, but it will enable me to be able to give more passes of dye on my leather and get a more even finish in the end result. Theoretically, if I take my time and do it properly, but again, be careful this will dry out your leather. At this point it's not a bad idea to put on some plastic gloves just to avoid getting any of the dye on your fingers. In my case I'm using Ethanol Absolute as mentioned 50-50 mix roughly with the dye. Since I'm right handed I like to have the dye on the left side simply because it means that it's further away from any movements I may be making. If I have it on this side it's more likely that I might hit it at some point and spill it. So yeah this is how I like to do it. However it does mean that I might be reaching over my piece so you have to be very careful not to get any spills and drops onto your leather. I'm using an old kitchen towel for this. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's absorbent. Um, just make sure it's clean. Uh, I have had the misfortune of using something that wasn't clean and finding traces of whatever was left over on my dirty piece of cloth on my leather, which was very annoying. At this point the leather mix should be mixed up and uh, yeah, ready to go. So just drip it in. You don't want much. Again, be very careful for drops and go ahead and start doing it in circular motions all along your piece. As you can see, thanks to the extra alcohol I've added, there isn't that much dye in here and it's going to enable me to have a much more even finish as the first two coats are always very uneven and it means that I can come back and uh, give this many, many more coats than I would normally. Also, don't worry too much about having different streaks on your leather at this point. These are things that we'll be getting rid of as we progress and as the dyes soak into the leather and as the dye dries, then it will all become much, much more even with time. Theoretically, three or four passes minimum should be needed at this point. I like to make sure that I'm giving it very different passes every time and want to avoid crisscrossing as that will leave some ugly streak marks which you might have more trouble getting out than usual. 
There we go. That's looking nice to me. At this point, you just want to let it dry thoroughly before you go on to the next step. Don't forget that this part will be drying out the leather quite substantially as there is a lot of alcohol in here. So the next step is going to be adding in some oils and making sure this is conditioned. Once you've given your leather five to 10 minutes to dry, go ahead and use another clean cloth to just basically buff off any pigments or anything that might still be on the surface. As you can see, my dye is relatively light, and this is because I used a 50-50 mix of alcohol, but you could definitely go with less alcohol and have it darker, or just simply have more coats of dye on your piece to get it as the right color for you. The next step is going to be oiling it, and there are several different options. You could just go for the neat foot oil again if that's what you've got, uh, let it dry, and then use some kind of nice hard wax to be able to buff the finish on this and buff the surface. Now, my trick, however, my secret trick is to use Saphir Renovateur. Now this is a special cream that's made with mink oils um, and solvents. The solvents are in there to just draw in the oils into the, um, into the leather. And it's a special one that's made for uh, bringing back to life really old leathers. And it, I just love this product. First of all, the mink oils and the oils that are present inside here do a great job of suppling up and moisturing, moisturing up, moist, moistening, I don't know, bringing back the moisture uh, and the levels of oils that are needed inside the leather. And secondly, and this is why I love this product, it's got some waxes in it, just enough that give it a gorgeous, gorgeous sheen and final finish to it, which just makes it really pop and look amazing. And I'll show you that in a second. The first thing you want to do is apply gently and massage it in with your fingers. Again, using gloves is a great way of doing this because it enables you to get your fingers directly onto the leather and the heat from your fingers help with bringing those oils and waxes into the leather. So definitely wear gloves and do this, although you could do it without gloves if you're not doing it very often. If you're just doing it from time to time, you can use this product without gloves, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I always recommend caution over laziness. Anyhow, go ahead and apply a nice even coat all around. You don't want it to be too thick, but you want it to have enough waxes and oils that it can be absorbed nicely into the leather. Once you're satisfied with how much you've got on there, just give it a couple minutes to dry and come back with your cloth and buff the finish. And there you have it guys, that is how I dye and prepare my vegetable tanned leather for all my projects. Thanks a ton for watching guys, thanks for being here, hopefully you've learned something, hopefully you've enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you very soon for some more leather craft.